Hey brothers and sisters. Okay, today is a special day. Other than being a super high watch day, it happens to be my birthday. So uh, for those of you who think I'm a, a Jezebel because I wear makeup and jewelry, you really don't want to watch this video. So bye, have a great day. <laughs> uh, I'm a Southern Atlanta girl and uh, you know, we like our jewelry and our makeup and since it's my birthday, I curled my hair. <laughs> um, and I know for a fact I'm not a Jezebel, so it's okay. Because um, the word is true. The Bible is true, and I believe every word of it, and I know exactly who God's talking about when he talks about the Jezebel. Uh, and that involves a sexual sin, which is not... Uh, a, I've been redeemed from that and forgiven and haven't had that issue for um, 12 years but I really don't celebrate my birthday I celebrate my rebirth day which I'm 12 years old right now um, instead of being 58 <laughs> and uh, my mom says don't tell anybody how old you are because then they'll figure out how old I am that is not me I, I I've never hid you know, if somebody would compliment me on something that they liked that I had uh, was wearing or whatever, I I would tell them, "Hey, I bought it at Sam's," or "I got this at you know online," or uh, you know TJ Maxx or Marshalls or whatever. I've always been proud of it if you know if I got a good deal. And um, so, <laughs> uh, some of y'all were like, "Why didn't Terry do a video yesterday?" I I, you know, I think I did. I think I did one on Wednesday. I can't remember. <laughs> Yesterday was a really cool day, and so a, a viewer of mine mentioned. I'm going to start with some of the last things first. Yesterday, you know, I yesterday I spent time uh, with God, uh, and try. To, I always am trying to have days where I'm a learner. So you know. It's sort of like putting on the oxygen mask before you uh, try to deliver a message or deliver the oxygen to your child. Uh, I try to put on the oxygen mask and receive, learn from God, learn from other believers uh, before I try to give out. So, uh, talk about a high watch period, right? We are in very high watch today, November 3rd. Uh, there's a video circulating around which a lot of people have put into their videos which I don't know how to do but I will put a link into it um, just with a lot of very interesting things with the um, purification of the woman giving birth to the male child plus um, you know we've got the November 2nd through the November 4th high watch time but also November 4th, tomorrow, is the beginning of Tabernacles. If you count that, um, that the feast days, of the fall feast did not happen in September, um, a lot of different people's videos out about that. Um, so, you know, if you want to find out about that, there are other places to go look. But if that's the case, then we have Feast of Trumpets, Yom Teruah, happening on October 21st. Um, you know, I had that 111 uh, confirmation and then the um, Matthew 5 confirmation of October 21st. So that would have been uh, Feast of Trumpets. Then, um, <laughs> like going blank. What comes after Feast of Trumpets? Oh, Feast of Tabernacles. <laughs> okay, so that begins today. I mean, tomorrow. Saturday tomorrow. Now, I'm, I'm, I might be missing something. Y'all, I've got... I, I, had, I had dreams about numbers last night. So, um, so, anyway, it turned out that I've got in my calendar, on my phone, I've got different high watch dates right they've been I've been having high watch dates since August um, and that's one of the things I'm really really grateful for with my 
birthday this year is that in this year, God has given me a, I had lost my best friend to cancer um, two years ago, so God gave me a new best friend, my friend Fairy, uh, who's getting closer. I've got her videos on my channel. She's got her own channel called Getting Closer, but I've got a playlist of her videos and I've got some of her um, testimonies. I am just so blessed to know this woman from Iran, Iran, um, who truly, it's like church did not do anything in her life to bring her to Christ. The Bible did not. It was, it was Jesus. Uh, actually, YouTube and near-death experiences um, got her going, but it, it, you know, she can see, uh, she can see God working on her life the whole time. But anyway, that's been a huge, huge blessing, and we are like the two witnesses um, together that uh, go to, you know, go to places, go to do things, share the gospel, um, talk with each other about things that we are seeing, and to, to be able to discern what's spiritually going on um just a lot of wonderful things and that plus this year is my year of being awakened to to the rapture because i was i was a sold out on mission great commission um loving god loving others christian who every night when I would go to bed, I'm like, okay, God, I'm ready. That was a great day. Thank you. I'm ready to go to heaven now. If you don't want me to wake up the next day, that would be great. Um, just, you know, hearing from the Lord and knowing who I was supposed to talk to and uh, who needed to know the cure for the disease of sin by knowing Jesus. And I had a testimony, plus I had the truth of the gospel. So, and... I would be filled with joy by going and telling people about um, what Jesus had done in my life and that uh, being in church all, all your life and being what you would have thought is a good person is not not being saved. So um, I, I still am Tangent Terry. No, I don't think anything's going to change about that. Ch tangent Talkative Terry. Uh, so tangents, but they're it's the way I, it's the way I roll, I guess. So anyway, I had a viewer yesterday evening that put in a comment that I thought was just so interesting because if Tabernacles begins um, tomorrow, the fourth is the way I calculate it. But that's also based on the Jerusalem sighting of the new moon, the um, the sighting of the uh, the sighting of the. Um, I'm sorry, I'm still bothered because I can't. I know there's a feast in between trumpets and tabernacles. Oh, Yom Kippur! <laughs> there we go. Thank you, God. <laughs> Day of Atonement. Okay, now I feel so much better. Thank you, thank you, God. Okay, so the actual uh, sighting of the new moon was the first sighting of the new moon was actually on the 20th in the United States on the East Coast. So that's a day earlier. So possibly, you know, if God is doing a Gentile work, which we have the revelation, um, the uh, solar eclipse kind of kicking a lot, a lot of the Gentile stuff off. And we know that the church age is primarily the Gentile age, uh, which is about to end. And so uh, we have, we have the Gentile way of looking at it, that the, uh, that Feast of Trumpets began on October 20th. But it could have be begun on October 21st. But even that, that's at sunset, right? So then you've actually got the next day is the day of until that sunset. Okay, so then, um, so I'm glad I got Yom Kippur in there. And actually, we have seen throughout this whole thing in the watching um, bride, a God continuing to work on us to cleanse us, cleanse us, cleanse us, to convict us of our sins, our sins of, is there something I'm still holding on to? Is there a loved one that I I don't want to let go and just let, I mean, they've chosen to refuse Jesus. They may even be going through the motions of being a Christian, but you've done what you can do. And, and now it's like, I need to be examining myself. Um, 
Am I truly in the faith? Lord, cleanse me, purge me from any other sins that I'm still hanging on to. Um, so, <laughs> still I'm going to get to this. So, so November 4th, <clears throat> 3rd or 4th would be Tabernacles. Tabernacles last, though, until the 12th. Now, that's what I have on my calendar, November 12th. Well, um, the, this viewer said, and I don't think I'd even talked about uh, when Tabernacles ends this time. I think I talked about it uh, in September. I did talk about when Tabernacles was ending um, and that Shemitah and all that. You know, I just, I, there's a, we've been on a journey, right? We've learned a lot. Leviticus 12, Leviticus 25. Uh, 20, excuse me, Leviticus 23 of the feast, and then I think it's Leviticus, Leviticus 25 that talks about the Jubilees. There's just been a lot that we have been learning. Um, but, dun -da -da -da, I'm finally going to get to it. It turns out that the last blood moon, it was called the Super Blood Moon, was on September 27, 2015. And this viewer said that, I don't know exactly how she found out, but she said she added seven, <clears throat> 777, that's 777 days, and it comes out to November 12th, which also is 111 weeks, right? 111 weeks from 927 to 1112 which 1112 would then be the end of tabernacles possibly the 13th would be that Shemitah eighth day thing we're in a jubilee we are not there are going to be trumpets blown uh, the trumpets aren't going to be blown uh, probably it is I don't even know I don't know what's going on in Israel but really if Israel's got all of this wrong, it really doesn't matter because God's got it all right. And for him to um, get us onto his calendar by looking at the signs and the Moedims from, from what his word says, why they were created, it just, I'm just, you know, I have other dates. I can go into um, the 29th of November because of uh, Israel and I think uh, Jerry Tony did a video talking about um, showing actually showing was it Jerry Tony I can't remember somebody showed a bunch of documents with that were the original I think it was Jerry Tony the original documents going back to um, uh, 1947 and 1948 you know that could even take us into May May because of 1948 which then could also take us into Passover, um, unleavened bread and first fruits into the spring. But, you, you know, there you're getting on the outside. It could definitely be the case, but why would we be so excited about the month of November in 2017? And so then I was just like, oh, when she said that, I was like, in my calendar, I've got November 12th as being an important day. Even though, and I did have, I did have a dream um, not too long ago, don't remember what day it was, but not too long ago, maybe a week ago, I did have the dream where I was the secret agent. We had caught, the bad guy had been revealed. Could that have been the Antichrist? I was not afraid of the bad guy in any way, um, but we had had, it turned out there were all these other secret agents. Um, who we ended up finding out that we were all on the same team. We were all the good guys on this undercover team to have the bad guy get caught and revealed. And the end of that dream was that we would all know each other by November 4th. I woke up and thought, oh my goodness, you know, it's like the underground church, even in America, the underground church is going to be revealed. The underground church is not all of these church buildings. It's not our our 
um, church groups that we are involved in, our Bible study, it's not. It's the, uh, it's the underground church is in the heart, right? The church is in the heart. The hearts of those who are truly in the church are turned towards Christ. They are serving. They are suffering. They are being persecuted. And they are ready to meet their groom. Which also was interesting because yesterday, I think it was yesterday, maybe the day before, I'd had um, that dream on September 23rd of, um, of flying up like I was being raptured. Uh, you know, hands up. It's not, a, uh, it's not flying like an airplane. It's flying up, like lifting off, flying up. I'd had that dream of lifting up. Then coming back down, every time I saw all of the people, um, you know, seeing the children, and there were, I was not by myself. There were other people. I couldn't see them, but I was totally aware of other people lifting up too. And I had that baby girl in my hand, in my arms. And every time I would start to fly her up, because I felt like I was assigned to take her up, every time I would fly up, I would then see um, the people that were panicked about the children leaving and I would come back down and the you know it was very interesting dream because I would share the gospel very short basically Romans um, 10 9 you know if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart you will be saved and the unbelievers the ones who were panicked their whole countenance I mean I remember waking up thinking their countenance changed their faces changed when they received jesus there was no fear there was no panic they were changed they were born again but those who were all in the line thinking i'm in the line to go in the rapture they all had their bags and their suitcases and their backpacks and i'm flying that's when i was sort of flying more horizontally even though i think i was standing up but i was flying this way yeah um i was like repent repent Put down your bags. You will not be able to lift off. Lift off was definitely the word I was using. You will not be able to lift off to go to heaven. You think you're in line to be raptured and you're not going to make it. And I didn't see a single one of those people get saved. Not a single one of them. Their countenance changed. But eventually I finally did leave them and made it up to heaven and was reunited with my baby and, and all that was really good um but it ended up yesterday i found a woman who had done a video in march explaining kind of explaining what i was seeing in my september 23rd dream based on the three types of harvest the barley the wheat and the um grapes now the interesting thing about it was she was talking about how the barley harvest is the pre-trib bride of Christ sanctified um, passionate um, set apart cleansed purified just as the woman uh, giving birth and of course the bride of Christ is the body of Christ going to join the head, which was what the September 23rd sign was about. And it just really made a lot of sense to me because I had gone to a group, um, I don't know, maybe 40 or 50 Christians um, who, they're not ready. The reason why I say they're not ready, first of all, uh, a lot of them are mid-trib people. Now, could the barley harvest be the pre-trib people, the wheat harvest be the mid-trib people, and then the grape harvest be the tribulation saints or the post-trib rapture people, um, <clears throat> which is Cornelius Jones is like, why would you do a U-turn? But we do know that there are going to be people saved through the tribulation, which also means that the Holy Spirit is still going to be here on earth, even though the Holy Spirit, the great uh, numbers of people who have the Holy Spirit are leaving that's you know the rapture the restrainer is going to be removed the church age is going to end those of us who are filled with the Spirit our spirit is lifting up we're going to be 
um, joined with our spiritual bodies. Those who are in the grave, who um, their spirits are already in heaven, but their bodies are going to be joined with them again. So um, her idea of, I mean, the way she said it, though, I mean, and and I believe this is, we don't know these things, right? It, it's it's a um, it's something for us to seek out, but we don't know. But I believe when God, when Jesus reveals things to people and makes the rest of us go, hmm, that, you know, gets me thinking, all of it is good. It gets us all digging in the Word. It gets us all um, seeking revelation from Jesus, um, having Him speak to us, having Him show us things in Scripture. It's all really, really good. So when this woman said that um, she also had gotten a word from Jesus that like the barley harvest would be the bride, the spotless bride going up. But she said she also thought, uh, was told that there would be three days of darkness. Um, well, that three days of darkness could actually also be three years if you think about it with, um, well, there's just a lot of stuff, you know, we don't, a day doesn't necessarily mean a day. Uh, just like a week doesn't mean a week. <laughs> anyway, um, but that also made sense to me because I've had such a problem with trying to understand how people could have the Holy Spirit, and I know that they have the Holy Spirit, but they are not interested in the rapture. They're not, you know, you try to tell them, hey, wake up, wake up. This is about to happen, and they are not interested. Is it because they're still clinging to things of this world? And that as I'm flying up and down the line trying to, trying to tell these people who thought they were going the rapture that they're not going, maybe by God's grace he's going to give them a period of time to repent. Yes, they're going to have to go through um, suffering, but they're still going to get in. And uh, that is starting to make a lot of sense to me because I just cannot believe how some Christians have treated other Christians and I know you're not a Christian just because you profess to be a Christian. But when I see people who I know have the Holy Spirit and they have lived a life counterculturally um, with regards to their sexual purity, with regards to what they think about um, abortion, um, with regard, you know, really these are beliefs that they have that are biblically based not somebody saying you've got to do this do this you've got to think this way it's that they have the holy spirit who has made them think this way so i got to figure that the reason why god has not awakened them to the rapture is that they are going to be left behind to be workers for the kingdom during the tribulation the first three and a half years which also i have had a couple of people on my channel um they've given me messages which i've removed just because it was like i just want to give you this message i don't want to really um you know they don't want to be attacked they don't want to be attacked but they they say i've i've been clearly told that i could go in the rapture but god is asking me to stay behind because he wants me to stay here to do the work of evangelism during during the first three and a half years of tribulation i believe them i believe them because if it may, if it's odd it's god and if they say you know i'm ready 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 to go but he has said would you do this for me that just sounds like jesus to me and so um though the though the great cloud of witnesses of of spirit-filled believers are leaving there will be I think by God's grace there will be a lot of people that were lukewarm had the Holy Spirit it could even be those um, those foolish virgins who you know we don't know um, we don't know what God's gonna do but I'm so I'm so excited that I'm in the group as of March 16th 316 I'm in the group that knows I'm in the barley harvest. <laughs> God has not told me otherwise. Thank you, Jesus, because I am ready to go. And um, 
So I'm really excited about that. Okay, so then uh, some songs, because you know I love my songs. Um, yesterday I started with a tune. I'm like, what is that? Oh, it's Our Mighty Fortress is Our God. And actually this might not have been Thursday. This might have been Wednesday. I think it was Wednesday, actually, now that I think about it. Um, and on Wednesday, Ferry and I... Oh, that's what I started to say. So, Ferry and I went to this group, uh, which was... They had met together to talk about the rapture, but it had a mid-trib... Uh, a mid... I mean, they covered all the different views, but it had a mid-trib um, bent, I guess focus mid-trib focus okay well the thing that was disturbing to me is that um, my question about what is this group doing about those who are going to be left behind was met with a lot of laughter which I felt was very troubling in fact there were three questions of the questions that were asked that received a lot of laughter two of them being my questions and one of them being about whether the pets go to heaven okay and i've done a video about whether the pets go to heaven and i do not worship my pet i do not love my pet more than i love god or love other people you know we there's a serious problem if we worship you know a pet can be an idol just like a child a husband a parent all of it you know idolatry is super super serious you know, if you aren't sure, if you have some things that you can't let go of, that's idolatry. Repent. Please, please repent. Ask God to give you repentance for loving anyone, anyone more than Him. Anything, any pet, any sport, any football team, anyone that you love more than Jesus, repent. Because, it's, you know, Jesus clearly says... If you love anyone more than me, that you're not worthy of heaven. And Jesus said, how will, he, how will he know whether you love him if you obey his commands? Well, the first thing that Jesus commanded was repent. That's the first thing he said when he began his ministry. Repent. So confess, forsake your sins, and he will cleanse you from all right, unall righteousness. But if you look at Revelation 21, 8, cowards go to the lake of fire. All liars. Liars does not mean just that you go around saying lies. Lies can also be um, hypocrisy of saying something which that's not really what's inside. Lies can be lies of, commission, of omission where you don't speak the truth. When, you know, that really ties in with um, James... I think it's 417, that if you know what's right to do and you don't do it, that that is still sin. Um, so, cowards, cowards, do you stand up? Are you willing to go against the culture and tell people what Jesus said because you love them? So, of those eight, I think there's seven, excuse me, seven categories, only one is unbelievers. <clears throat> and I just find, you know, if you go through the scriptures and you look, and I'm going to put a link into a video I watched um, last night. Um, it's a new video, too. I don't know exactly. I think this guy has recently become awake as to uh, being lukewarm. And um, so he's, he's, you know, he's very passionate. As I, I think I'm pretty passionate about the transformation that causes us if we have been truly been given a new heart a regenerated heart that we are going to obey christ and teach others to obey the great commission is called the great omission if we are all we're doing is going out sharing the gospel and we are not making disciples disciples who love God passionately and love, love others, right? If we're not getting them baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and we're not teaching them to obey 
his commands. Someone told me uh, that there are like 405 commands in the New Testament. But the huge difference between the Old Testament commands and the New Testament commands is that the New Testament commands are, uh, are uh, obeyed by the power of the Holy Spirit. I think that's what this whole channel has been about. When you walk by the Holy Spirit always, which is the goal, uh, none of us do it perfectly, even though I'm seeing like great sanctification in my life, and I think I'm seeing it in your lives too, that uh, God has been working on us and bringing us to that point of sanctification where we don't care about so many things that we used to care about because they were idols in our lives and we've just given them up and said you know always only Jesus as the song says um, so anyway what was disturbing about this group of people who are not um, passionately waiting for Jesus's return maybe not rapture wake really um, you know, aware of lost people in their lives, but still uh, having anxiety and worry about these people instead of having the confidence that they have done everything possible that they can do for them. And it's just, you know, they've got, they've done what they've, they've done. They've, you know, they've, um, in certain situations, they've been removed from relationship with people because of their light Jesus said you know that if they leave you is because they were never one of you so if your light is shining which we are to be salt and light um, the cultural Christian or the lukewarm Christian or the um, really those who are just basically not on team Jesus those two they all leave and when you lose those relationships it hurts it hurts a lot but you know that it's because you are passionate and your passion and your light and your fire for Jesus is offensive to them but you know Jesus said if you go into a house and they refuse to listen to you you're supposed to Remove the blessing and wipe the dust from your feet. So when these people are laughing about, oh, you know, the question is, what do, what are we doing for those who are going to be left behind? And there's great laughter. That's disturbing. Because if you have a mission, gospel-driven mission, you want everybody to get saved. You don't want anyone going to hell. And you're not going to be laughing. You're going to be like I was in my dream. I'm going to be lifting up and looking down and still having compassion and mercy and wanting people to get saved. It's just basic to me. It's very basic. Um, and my second question. Huh, I can't. What was my second question? At the moment, I can't remember. It also was uh, met with a lot of laughter. And it was just... Um, what are we doing for those who are going to be left behind? Oh, thank you, Jesus. He did it again. <laughs> the second question was, what about... Um, <laughs> I'm thinking wise virgins. I'm thinking about the wise virgins, the parable of the wise virgins. Oh, I know. The question was, did, did the person teaching the group believe that every single person who has the Holy Spirit will be going to heaven or if the lukewarm will be left behind? And all of them were laughing about this. I think that's. I think this is a question that my viewers think about. I think it's a question that Christians around the world think about. We're trying to figure out, if you have the Holy Spirit, why have you not been made rapture ready? 
I think I've already answered the question in what I talked about with the possibility of the different harvest. Um, but for people to be laughing about that question, when I think that's a very, very deep question, that, and it wasn't like laughing, like uncomfortable laughing. It was like the whole group was laughing loudly. I don't think Jesus was laughing. I think Jesus wants our hearts to be broken for what breaks his. And yes, Jesus never complained. In John 17, Jesus did not complain to the Father about how many the Father was giving him. But as we are here in the world, we have compassion on people. That's the reason why we, we want them to get saved. And we want them to get saved and we want them to be ready for the rapture. Uh, okay, so this has been 35 minutes. So I'm going to do another video <clears throat> on what God showed me in the scripture yesterday. So I love you. I hope that you're excited about these days that we are living in. And I know you are. I know you are. And I just think that um, it's all coming together. I love you. Bye-bye.